What's going on everyone? My name is Steven and today I'm going to explain what homework looks like for apprentice electricians. <sighs> All right, well hey, if you're new to my channel, welcome. The entire purpose of this channel is actually meant to be a resource for you if you're interested in becoming an electrician. So if this is a trade that you're interested in pursuing, then you are definitely in the right place. Also, huge thank you to Upstrive for sponsoring today's video. I'll have more on them a little later. All right, so before I got into the electrician apprenticeship myself, I was genuinely curious what homework looked like for the schooling portion of the electrician apprenticeship, and I'm willing to bet that I'm not the only one. And I do just want to say that everything that I mentioned today is going to be specific to the way that things work here in Portland, Oregon with IBEW Local 48. Also, I just want to mention that I'm going to be really careful what I choose to show and not show in this video regarding homework because I don't want to run into any sort of copyright issues. So with that out of the way, let's get into this. So here at Local 48, apprentices actually do have quite a bit of homework when it comes to the schooling portion of the apprenticeship. In the same way that the difficulty of each class will vary from term to term, so will the amount of homework that is given out. For example, in second and fourth term, which are AC and DC theory, there's a significant amount of homework that is given out. And in ninth term, which is form and development, BIM modeling, and OSHA 30, there's actually hardly any homework that's given out. So I'd say that over the course of your apprenticeship, the average amount of homework that's going to be given out each week is going to be somewhere around four homework assignments. And I'd say that based off of my own experiences, homework assignments generally take somewhere between one and two hours. This means that as an apprentice, you really need to be on top of your schoolwork and practice good time management, especially since here at Local 48, failing a term early on in your apprenticeship could actually result in you getting kicked out of the program. Now, of course, some homework assignments are gonna be easier than others and how fast you finish is really gonna vary from person to person. And I know that I personally probably take a little bit longer than most people do to finish their homework assignments. And that's because I just really want to make sure that I have a good understanding of the material, not just so that way I can pass the class, but that way I really am genuinely learning the material. Now the homework that's assigned takes on many different forms. Sometimes you'll have worksheets, projects that you have to draw out, or even projects that you have to physically build. So an example of a project that you might have to build is something like a homopolar motor, and an example of a project that you might have to draw out would be something like a blueprint for a residential house uh, where you're basically placing the power wherever it belongs per code. In ninth term, we even had to put together presentations on various OSHA 30 topics. But by far, the most common type of homework that you're going to have throughout your apprenticeship is actually going to be online homework in the form of quizzes. Now again, in order to avoid any copyright or user agreement issues, I'm not going to be mentioning the name of the online service that we use for these quizzes or showing any screenshots. What I can tell you though is that these online quizzes are going to be based off of the assigned reading that we have from our textbooks, and the assigned reading is going to be based off of topics that we covered in class. So some people just try to skim through the reading as fast as possible to pick out the answers to the online quizzes, while other people will go ahead and read the whole chapter and then answer questions in the quiz along the way. Most of the time, I find myself in the second camp, and that's why I know that I personally probably take a little bit longer to finish my homework assignments than most people. And I actually find that for me, when I'm at home reading for my homework, that's when things that I've learned in class really finally click. And just like the strategy that I mentioned in my aptitude test video for taking the reading portion of the aptitude test, I like to go ahead and read the whole chapter from start to finish and just underline anything that sounds important along the way. And more often than not, I actually find that the things that I already have underlined are going to be answers to the questions that are on the quiz. So here are some of my textbooks from school. And inside these textbooks, whether it's a keyword that I highlighted or an important piece of information that I underlined, just about every single page has some sort of marking on it. This also makes going back and studying for tests and finals a breeze, as it's easy to quickly locate any of the important information that I already have underlined in each of the chapters. Another thing that I like to do is place a little asterisk next to anything that I read from my textbook that actually ended up being an answer to one of the questions on the quiz. Again, this just makes studying for tests and finals much more focused as I can quickly spot the most important topics of relevance that I should probably reread. 
And something that I found is that the questions that we have on these online quizzes are oftentimes going to be very similar to the questions that we have on the actual in-class tests. And I should also mention that here at Local 48, our actual overall classroom grade really doesn't come from our homework. It usually comes from the tests that we have in class and a couple of projects that were assigned each term. Still, you do need to complete your homework in order to finish the term, and there are penalties for performing poorly on these online quizzes. Now, I want to show you a few examples of different types of questions that you might see on your homework, but first I want to tell you a little bit about the sponsor of today's video. So Upstrive is an online tutoring company that is specifically for tradesmen. With them, you get to have a personalized online tutoring experience that way you can have all of your questions answered and feel completely confident and prepared going into your trades state licensing exam. Not only does Upstrive offer online tutoring from professional tradesmen with years of experience, but they also have tons of other useful resources as well. Here you can see that Upstrive offers different packages for electricians who are going to be taking their journeyman's or master's licensing exam. These packages include things like code books, tabs, practice tests, study guides, a book on code calculations, one-on-one -on -one tutoring, and even access to their online library of code lectures. And Upstrive doesn't just offer these resources to electricians. They also offer things to HVAC, plumbers, roofers, general contractors, and more. As a student, you can just go to their website, answer a couple of quick questions, and they're gonna get you set up with a perfect instructor. And if you already have your license, love to teach, and wanna make some extra money from home, then you can actually become a tutor for Upstrive yourself. So if you're an aspiring electrician, then you gotta make sure to check out Upstrive today. And there's a link to their website in the description of this video. So here are just a few completely random examples of questions I came up with that are going to be similar to things that you might see on your homework, depending on which term you're in. The type of dielectric used on a capacitor has a significant effect. True or false? Which of the following systems is not required to be grounded? A. 240 volt, 3 phase, 3 wire delta system. B. 480 volt, 3 phase delta system, C, 600 volt 3 phase system, or D, all of the above. Calculate the volt amps for a 208 volt 3 phase circuit that has a line current of 10 amps. So you get the point. These homework questions that you have will be covering a wide variety of topics that you learn throughout your apprenticeship. And if you have yet to learn these things, then these example questions that I showed you probably just sound like Greek. But based off of these few example questions I came up with, you can probably kind of get a feel for what the homework itself is going to look like. Now since homework is online, it's going to be important for you to have a way to access these assignments. I actually know some people who have gone through their apprenticeship doing most of their homework on their phone. Personally, I spent most of my apprenticeship actually doing my homework on my iPad. But once I finally bit the bullet and got myself a MacBook, I found, in my opinion, that doing homework on a laptop is actually much easier. Now, when it comes to scheduling out my week, I really like to have all of my homework done at least two days before class. That way, the day before class, I can spend that time reviewing and studying for the weekly test. If it's been a busy week, that doesn't always happen, but it definitely helps make life a lot less stressful, and it helps me to perform much better as a student. And here's something that I think is really important to mention. This is your education, and what you get out of it is going to be directly proportional to what you put into it. Ultimately, this is your career, and the things that you learn from your homework and in class aren't just going to be random bits of information that you're never going to use again in your life. They're going to apply directly to your career. And sure, knowing the ins and outs of the power triangle and AC theory, or the difference between an XIC and an XIO when it comes to programming PLCs, might seem a little unnecessary at the time, but during your apprenticeship, you are laying the foundation upon which the rest of your career is going to be built. And the more you know, the better of an electrician you're going to be. And the better of an electrician you're going to be, the more valuable you're going to be to your employer. And the more valuable you are to your employer, the more opportunities you're going to have down the road. Who knows, maybe you'll want to actually become an electrical contractor yourself, open up your own shop, and be your own boss someday. In which case, I would highly recommend, as I said before, looking into Upstrive. 
As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content and found it to be useful. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and check me out on Discord if you want additional content. And last but not least, have a good one.